Great. Welcome to Digital Asset News. Stop stories in crypto, break down to bite-sized pieces, all that great stuff. So just like the title and the thumbnail suggest, DeFi legend says crypto is dead. Long live crypto. And this really comes down to a Medium post from Andre Kronhe, which if you don't know who he is, he's a gentleman that created Wi-Fi, also one of the tech leads for Phantom. And this is a great article and talks about what exactly is wrong with the crypto culture and how things are kind of spiraling down and how important regulations are. So we'll take a look at exactly what he says. Also, we'll do a quick update of TGLP and fame. Uh, we're gonna also do a president interview tomorrow. And lastly, we'll finish up uh, to talk about step and deep dive on the second channel, which will be out later today. And lastly, five questions in five minutes. So hold all your questions till the very end. So let's just get into it, shall we? First of all, if you're here for the live stream, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, if you're here for the replay, just know you can skip around all those great things because there's going to be stamps underneath or timestamps. And then uh, news takes about 15 minutes. Then after that, we go through the uh, Q&A. So hold your questions till the end. Let's jump into it, huh? And the first part here is uh, just so you know, I will be at uh, Consensus uh, June 9th through 12th in Austin. Reason is because I'm in El Paso. It's not a very far drive for me. And I'll just go head down there and Check out what's going on, Ethereum consensus and all that great stuff. I missed the Miami one, the Bitcoin conference, because uh, also I was traveling from Puerto Rico to here. But this one I want to go to because it was accessible. So we'll see how it is. If you're in the Austin area, stop on by. All right. Enough of that stuff. Let's talk about the market today. I don't need to tell you this because you know it. Market's a little bit above, but it's dropped down a little bit. And everybody was talking about yesterday about, well, Tax season is over for Americans, which means it'll probably keep going up. Well, that's not how. Every time you think you know where the market's going, it does the exact opposite. And here we are. So in 24 hours, well, I guess Bitcoin is up 0.1%. That's good. Ethereum's down, Tether, nobody cares. Binance coin, 24 hours. Just chopping sideways. Nothing to write home about. Nothing to roll out of bed. I mean, 2.2% for Polkadot. Woo. 0.9% eh, for Bonda Luna. Huh. 0.4%. Interesting, interesting, 2.3. I could do a story about that. Bonded Luna, 94.61. Then, of course, uh, we've got Terra over here, number eight. Oh, I got to check that out. And then ApeCoin is up 20%. Congratulations, all you ApeCoin holders. I don't own any of that stuff. Uh, wish I did, though. Would have been up. <laughs> and YouTubers. So that's what's going on in the market. And I can just tell you that what I always like to do is take a look at, well, if the market's down a little bit today, What's going on with the traditional market? And actually, because I think it's correlated personally, but the S&P is it's, it's going through a wild ride, especially if you own uh, Netflix. Good luck with that. Uh, but just all over the place. It opened up at 44.72. Now it's at 44.71, 72. That's yeah, about the same thing. It's slightly, slightly up. Also, really what I think our crypto market's really correlated to NASDAQ and you can see it's down again. So I know people say, well, it's not really that correlated. I don't know, man. Every time I do a video, it's the same thing. Crypto's down a little bit, Bitcoins, I mean, uh, and NASDAQ's down a little bit or it's up or it's sideways and that's just what's going on. Also, if we take a look, there is some good news though. Uh, that is if, this is uh, Ben's website from into the Cryptoverse. Great website. Uh, there's a link in the description, not an affiliate link, just check it out. I love it. And uh, one of those things is monthly uh, returns uh, based on by month to month. And I will say this, a video we did a, day, a couple days ago, two or three days ago, uh, April's returns were negative 14. Today, they're only negative eight. So, I, I mean, that's good news. We'll see how it goes till the end of the end of the month. But that's what we got. And statistically or typically, April's been a pretty good month overall. Then May, eh, not too bad. Then June, eh. Then July, it starts to kind of slide off. And August and September is just awful, usually. But again, past performance is not indicative of future results. But then you can kind of see that October, November, December look a lot better, which is why I think I'm going to really look at this closely and start to start to uh, decrease my positions in May and June. When I'm selling May go away, might be actually true. And also, just as a quick reminder, even though I know some people say, oh, this is a, that was a terrible title, Rob. Terrible, terrible thumbnail. Hey, man, I didn't say it. I said in the title, Andre Crone, or I said DeFi legend, I guess. Bitcoin or crypto is dead. Long live crypto. And if you take a look at it, like we've always talked about in this channel, 
over the long haul, things are going to go pretty well. This is, again, a regression band, logarithmic. And you can kind of see that we're actually overvaluated uh, for the market. The fair value is $1.61 trillion. We're sitting around 2.0. .2 so that's like, I don't know, 16, 15, some, 15 to 17%, somewhere around there. But, of course, as we go up, you know, 2.3 in 20, 2023, 2.3.0 in July 2023. I'll stick around for that. I'm okay with that. I can see that. But just remember, uh, fair market value is where we're at. We could go below, could abo go above. Nobody knows. Let's break into the day's top story. So this is what we got. I thought this was fascinating. And this is, uh, was a Medium post from Andre Cronhe. Who the heck is that? Like I said in the, in the beginning, Andre Cronhe, he's a gentleman that created Wi-Fi or, yeah, Wi-Fi. And I always gave him a lot of guff because he, I always felt like he was going too fast and breaking things. And there was some different issues with uh, some, some, not rugs, but hacks and things like that. And, uh, but he did his best and he was trying to, to push things along. Good for him. Uh, he was also a uh, tech lead for Phantom Wallet. And there's another, uh, there was another project that he was a part of, uh, Keeper Network. So, this gentleman was one of the first, and he's really one of the, one of the ones that really kick off DeFi, and that's why I call him a DeFi legend. Hopefully he comes back, but he's, uh, he's taken a, a step back. But he wrote this great Medium article and said this, crypto's dead, long live crypto, which is a great line, I gotta admit. If you really wanna get sucked in, that's a good line. And it, but just, it just evolves from there, and it was awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some, some of the key parts to what I think is important. And it really comes down to where you think you are, where you think you should be. And if you take a look back, hindsight is 2020. Were you always correct in the past? I don't know. I, I got to tell you, for me personally, I've been wrong a lot in the past. And this made a lot of sense. So he says this. He goes, I wish I was older. I wish I was old enough to see the birth of monetary policy. I wish I could have seen the mistakes they had made because I believe we are repeating them. And of course, when he's talking about monetary policy, he's talking about traditional finance. He said, what's being built in crypto is being built by people that read a Wikipedia article on bonds or debt instruments and then think to themselves, I can do this better, which I think we can, we can all say that, right? We take a look at a business and be like, man, I could do that way better. I've, done, I've been there before. I could do that better. And then he gives an example as far as like encoding. And the, I'm not going to leave the whole thing to you, but what he really says is you coders can take a look at code and say, this is an awful piece of code. What trash, you know, what an awful, or what an awful crypto, what an awful DeFi project. I can definitely make this better. And then he says, as a coder at a top tier one at that, he says, you go home and you, you know, over the next days, weeks, and months, you write all this code. And then the very end, you're like, shoot, now I, and now I come back to the original thesis of why these guys did what they did or gals. And uh, guess what? It's the same thing in, in a lot of times because you realize as you go down through it, I think we can, we can attest this when you're in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, 50s, 60s, you start to realize that, shoot, now I understand why things are the way they are or why things have done this way. Now, there's possibilities to improve upon that, obviously. But in the long game, a lot of times you find out that, shoot, this actually doesn't make a lot of sense, maybe just a little tweak. And he says monetary policy is the same. Understanding monetary supply, issuance, debt, bonds, synergy, debentures, commodities, securities, derivatives can't be viewed in isolation. They exist for a reason. And he talks about he's got a, a massive disdain for crypto culture. I think you guys can feel it too. And I think you can feel it because if you're here right now, you're not the overnight millionaire. You're not the person who's like, oh, I'm just going to invest in a week and be, you know, then I can quit my job and all that stuff. It doesn't work like that. You know, it's, it's tough. And he talks about, he's got a love for crypto ethos and crypto ethos is the concept like self sovereign rights, self custody, self empowerment, which is what I, I think, I can't say everybody is here for that. I can't say that everybody's like, I just came here. I just came here to change the world and be a good person. Let's be honest. Come on. I think it sounded good on paper, but I think a lot of the times when people came in this, this space was because numbers go up. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think that's why a lot of you got involved into it. I know that's what brought me in at first. I'm like, hmm, wow, this, these numbers keep going up. I want to sell. And then you learn the ethos behind it. And he talks about crypto culture as concepts like wealth, entitlement, enrichment, and ego. And I got to tell you before we go on, uh, this crypto ethos, 
self-sovereign rights, self-custody, self-empowerment, that's tough. It's tough to understand those, those theories because you've been, not brainwashed, you've been taught for such a long time that you use a bank, you trust the countries, you, look, you don't look behind the curtain and what the madman are doing, and you just go, okay, I just trust you guys and just do those things. So when we talk about self-custody and self-empowerment and all those things, it's, it's a new concept for a lot of people. Ask anybody outside your circle of crypto and they'll tell you the exact same thing. So I think personally that for people to get there to this self-custody, self-empowerment thing takes a lot of education and it takes patience. And that's exactly, and this isn't a little uh, gratuitous plug. You know that my website, Dan Teaches Crypto, I made it free for everybody for that specific reason. So we talk about like self-empowerment and, and self-custody. I got a whole chapter on how to use like a ledger wallet and a Trezor and all that good stuff and, the, and, and a MetaMask wallet. So if you're just like, if you know it, great. But if you have somebody you don't want to spend the time of teaching, just send them my website. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Anyhow, moving back. Crypto culture, he states, has strangled crypto ethos. A professor, and this, this gets down to the crux, two of the crux of the articles. A professor once told me contracts are there for bad times, not the good times. Regulation and legislation are the same. They're there for the bad times. We need them most. It's not the good times when it's all uh, honeymoon and champagne. I think we can all attest to that, right? When there's a bull run, we're like, we don't need anything. And then all of a sudden, this is a funny thing. The more people that get rug pulled and get screwed out of their, out of their uh, crypto, the more people like, we need some regulation. It's the people that really have and have it. Not all the time. Don't jump down my throat. But I think that is what it is. When more people get screwed over, they're like, you know what? We need more regulation. And this was actually uh, a fair point when I posted this, this article. This is from Jake Flowers. I'm, I'm guessing he's a pilot. But and he makes a great point. He says, there's a reason the saying regulations are written in blood exists in aviation. It usually takes some paradigm shifting, some bad event for someone to say, hey, we should do something to prevent this from happening. Same thing will happen in crypto. And I think it's happening right now. I think especially all the different, uh, the fail safes that are there. I know, you know, uh, my, the my thesis is not very popular in the crypto community. It just isn't. I still say that we need a little regulation. And I'll stand by that. Uh, and I always say like this, a little regulation is good. It's like cake. A lot of regulation is not so good. I mean, a slice of cake is okay, but you know, three entire cakes shoved down your throat is going to just ruin your night and your toilet probably. So that's really what regulation is. And then to finish up, he says, we're entering a new age. The current iteration will become the badlands where unknown wallets lurk in the shadows. We'll see the rise of a new blockchain economy, not one driven by greed, but instead driven by trust, not trustlessness. I thought that was interesting because usually we just talk about a trustless blockchain. I find myself more excited than ever. And that was it. So that was the whole article. And I thought it was just fascinating how he kind of comes through and just says, you know what? These are the things that I thought I knew. And again, this is somebody who's lived it, who's done it, who's created DeFi and has moved forward. Is like, this is what I thought I knew. As I go through it, I realize I don't know everything and my opinions change. And even he is like, you know what? We really should get some regulations in there. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I'm sure it won't be great. But if it is, hey, if it's not, that's why we have this open, great society, freedom of speech. And that's what's going on. So let me know what you think about that comment section. Let's move on to our last two pieces and we'll get out of here. Uh, just real quick, a uh, quick update. The TGLP and the FAME uh, token. I had talked about this on uh, my second channel, Digital Asset News DGen. And I say DGen because that's my, the more the degenerate plays where I take like 5% of my portfolio and put into those things. And that's why it's risky. Just if you're gonna invest in something like that, just assume all that money is gone. I'm not an investment advisor. I'm just telling you what I'm investing into. So if you look at that, like it's kind of risky. But we did talk about this project and it's looking pretty good, Fame MMA. And I talked about, you know, there was a TGLP uh, event where you can lock up tokens and you can get into this this uh, this pre-sale, not a private token, you know, uh, ICO or something like that, but a pre-sale be okay. And because this one has pretty massive utility, and I we did the video. This was uh, April fourteenth. Wow, this wasn't that long ago. And I got all the links in there, and uh, I said, hey, this is going to happen. So they said, hey, the subscription is now open. Uh, so go and, and, and do that so you can lock up your TGLP to get fame tokens. And within five minutes, 
uh, it was done and it's gone. So sorry about that. But uh, uh, I, I will say that, and you, you can find the video. I, I, I linked the, the description for Dan Digital Asset News DGen channel. And this one's pretty, pretty good. And I, if we're all taking a look at like the utility, this one has it all. I mean, you get discount on pay-per-view. They got a play during game. All the fighters are, again, they're a bunch of like uh, influencers, TikTokers, and YouTubers, and actual UFC fighters or ex-UFC fighters. You can spend on merchandise, NFTs, and go for staking, referral links. That's the token I'll do. And it, it's already built in. It's already like, I, now I say, will it make the cut? How big is the community? This one has millions globally. Uh, what's the utility? It's pretty darn good. Uh, what's the tokenomics do? It's pretty great because even I got in a little, little early and I have a lock-in period of like one to two years, so I can't dump on anybody. And then, of course, uh, how the tokenomics. That's pretty good. Actually, a lot of it goes into uh, staking. Go figure. So uh, that's it. And then tomorrow we'll have a, I'll be doing an interview with uh, Christoph. He is the uh, president of Fame MMA, which is based in uh, Poland and is branching out in parts of EU. So that's what's going on. And then lastly, just so you know, the step in deep dive video, uh, it'll be up on the Dan DGen channel later today. Just so you know, it looks very promising, but it's got some problems. That's all I'll tell you. That's what we got. So that is it. Let me just think about that in the comment section. Let's do a little Q&A and go from there. Ah, Q and A. Okay. <laughs> Such clickbait. It worked. I'm here. Christopher, dang, another clickboy title got me again. Yeah. I guess it's clickbait. Um, I personally believe that clickbait is like you say that uh, Bitcoin is going to the moon tomorrow. And then you put out some lame ass data that doesn't really show anything. And you keep doing it again and again and again and again. And it gets people so worked up and there's so much hopium that they just get burnt out. And all those people are gone because they're like, you guys keep lying to me. You say it's going to burst off tomorrow. It's not bursting off tomorrow. It's going to take a lot of time. Um, and then also, I think clickbait is where you, you talk about, you put something in the, in the title and, and absolutely don't talk about what it is. I always hate those those terms, but it is what it is. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Rob, I almost almost FOMO into ApeCoin, but I heard your voice in my head. Yeah, well, you know, ApeCoin, look at that, plus 20%. So if you need a dollar cost average into it, not a bad deal, but uh, I didn't. And uh, look, I'm going to miss a lot more opportunities because there's so many different coins out there. I'm going to miss a lot, just like Warren Buffett talks about. I miss, a lot, I miss a lot of opportunities, but I'm okay with the winners that I already have. And that's, uh, that's it. So yeah. C.T. Larson sold his portfolio. I don't know if that's true. I got to talk to C.T.O. about that. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, what's this? Uh, the overnight millionaires make up a much larger percentage of the crypto market than the traditional markets. Well, okay. I see what you're saying. You're saying that there's a lot more millionaires being made in crypto than there is traditional markets. That is very true. I don't know about the, the overnight millionaires. Uh, probably so actually too. Because like, if you can become an overnight millionaire in traditional finance... Talk to me. Let me only hear about how you did that in a very, very boring market. But if you do it overnight in crypto, it's not totally unheard of. I think we know those people and good for them. Uh, here's a great question. Rob, do you think the sentiment over the next three months will be more bearish or bullish? I think it'll be neutral to, to a little bit bearish. And here's the thing. There was, there's some news story that just came out that there's some new type of, um, of futures ETF that was just approved for a different law uh, based on the books of the SEC. And people are saying, oh, well, that means the, then a traditional spot ETF is going to be approved. Maybe. I will tell you this. I personally don't think it's going to happen, but I sure hope I'm wrong. But if it does happen, 
that will flip this whole market, I think, for a, a finite amount of time. I think people will really uh, start to be more bullish and go from there. But if you have to take a look at it in the global macro sense, you know, what's the, I mean, there's a, I mean, we always talk about institutional money's coming in. It's coming in any, any day now. I mean, I think there is, but I think if, if you could have, again, uh, Ukraine and Russia, some type of resolution there, sure. If you have an ETF, spot ETF that comes out, big time. And if you have really positive regulation that gives clarity as to what crypto and digital assets are and allow these institutions to invest, that would change the whole market. You just take one of those and it'll happen. However, on the flip side, if none of those happen, then you have to take a look at uh, the slowdown in the, in, the, in the economic chains or the uh, supply chains. You have to take a look at, the, at what's going on with the Federal Reserve as they start to uh, do rate hikes. And you have to take a look at uh, uh, the growth or people that are getting into crypto. Right now, there's not a ton of people getting into crypto because it's a, it's a very risk on asset. So I just take a look at the data. I mean, I can't, I mean, that's just what we see. I mean, there's not a ton of, of growth as far as like Bitcoin wallets or crypto wallets. There's other, other projects you know, that can do well in the alts, but it's few and far between. That's why you gotta be really careful. So to answer your question, I think as, as time goes on and we start to hear more about recession, I think people will be like, well, what am I gonna put my money in? You know, because I've been doing stocks here for 10 years and there hasn't been a, a big recession since 2008, 2009. And this is what I know for the last 10 years. This is what I've done. Or I'm going to put in a, people still put money into bonds. People still buy gold and silver. I own a little gold and silver, not that much. And people are still going to buy crypto because they believe into it. Now, is there going to be a big shift from the crypto markets because they go, wow, we're losing too much and, and inflation? I don't think so. I think for a while, and just there's a, I've got a, a playlist. It's called the crypto future. And one of those I talk about, yeah, right here, uh, this one. And I just said, just, just take a look at the, at the data that's out there. And um, you can see just where the sentiment is actually going. Again, could be wrong, hope I'm wrong. <laughs> Beardy. I ran or did I fail geography? That's right, I didn't fail. Uh, let's see. Samara, do you have a single brother? I do not. They're both married. They're both morons. You wouldn't like them. <laughs> I know. That's why, you know, shilling yourself. Yeah. And then Mark Watt said, and he's got a good point. When everyone is screaming recession, that's the one thing that won't happen while the masses think that's what's coming. And there's actually some data that, that looks like it may not be a recession coming forth. But again, um, if you take a look at unemployment rates, we're actually doing pretty good. And that's one of the big indicators. And also, if you take a look at recession, you know it's a, it's a lagging indicator. You have to have two quarters of a reduction of GDP. And right now, our GDP is actually going up. The thing that I worry about is that the goods and services, how do we increase those when the supply chains are just rotten and just awful? And especially with the lockdown in China, which I never really liked that whole point of China creates everything and then they ships it all over the world. But that's what we allowed to happen over the last 20, 30 years. And that's just uh, how you go. <sighs> eh, I think that's it. Did I miss something? If I miss something, put it in the, in, the, in, the, in the chats and I'll pick it up again. <laughs> Make it in the USA. Easier said than done. Here's another thing. Netflix is down 37%. So Netflix, I think, is a pretty strong company. They just came out and said, hey, in the next quarter, we predict that we're going to only get, I think it was like 2.1 million more subscribers, and they just dropped off the face of the earth. And I get they get a lot of, they're getting a lot of um, competition from like Disney Plus and Paramount Plus and all the different uh, streaming services. And of course, they're all going to compete. But uh, I think it's just a weird, just a, I think it's an overcorrection of 37% down for Netflix. I'd actually be looking into actually buying some more of that. I love Netflix for the most part. Ah, I think we're good. 
and that. I'll leave it as this. Stagflation just as bad. Yeah, true. All right, everybody. So that's it for today. So I know it's um, it wasn't the hopium. I think that everybody's like, oh, it's going to be great and we're going to the moon. Look, eventually we'll get there. It just depends on how long it is. And um, uh, I'm here for the long run because I, I, I believe that, I mean, I'll be here next year. I'll be in three years. I'll be here in five years. I'll be here in 10 years. And uh, over time, things will go up. The question is, how long is it going to take? That's it. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for stopping by. I appreciate it. And uh, I like the video. Give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But the thumbs down button's broke. Also consider subscribing. That's it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Adios.